Thank you, Ruslan. Without any further ado, we have been waiting for this. Oh, you have. Pastor huh? Earl. a miracle. I, as you know, about a couple months ago, I got Parkinson's, and I thought I'd never be in the pulpit again. And uh, I was losing my balance and doing everything wrong. And I felt I was going to die. But I'm amazed. God he has begun to touch me. And I'm, I'm beating at Parkinson's. And there's, there's life. Now, I'm not as peppy as I used to be. I used to be able to run four or five miles every week. But now I, uh, I just walk a couple of miles. But I, I'm grateful, church, for your patience and for your prayers. Because <clears throat> oftentimes, we believe that our faith is supernatural, but we don't see too much evidence of it. But you're looking at it right now. Amen. So thank you. And I, I, I do want to share a couple of thoughts. I'd like to, <clears throat> we often get together here now and we are celebrating Christmas. And I had a thought that we should celebrate Christmas every day. Mm -hmm. Christmas is a mass or a service to meet with Jesus. And that's what, I, that's what I think we need to see. That in many incidences in this coming year, God and man will meet. You, you, will, you will seek him and God will, and you'll seek his face, his presence, and God will respond. The amazing thing, God and man meeting together. What's the response? What happened? Uh, as we'll look at the four major characters in our Christmas story and talk to you about how they responded. Now, I don't know your future, but I know that every one of you sitting here at some time in this coming year, we'll be crying out to God. I don't mean that as a fearful thing. I mean that as a great opportunity that you will cry out to God. And that, well, how will God respond and how will you respond? What will you say? What will you do? Now the first person I'd like to look at, of course, is Mary. Okay. First of all, I'd like to, to, to lighten up the service a little bit with one of my poor jokes. <laughs> okay? Got to get loosened up here a little bit and enjoy it. <clears throat> this man was very lonely, and he decided he wanted to buy a canary. So he bought a canary, brought it home, put it in the cage, and nothing happened. The canary didn't say a word. So he went back to the, back to the store, and he said, where? Why, why won't this canary speak? It won't speak to me. It won't say anything. I said, what you, what you need is a mirror. So I sold him a little mirror, put it up, and the bird looked at it and pecked at it. But still, no sounds. Nothing. So he went back again to the store. It says, nothing's happening. What do you need? Uh, I have, I have, you have to have a ladder. Birds like to go up and down the ladder. So they put the ladder in. Still nothing. The bird said nothing. Absolutely nothing. So finally they said, well, you, <coughs> you need to put a swing in there because they like to swing. So I got on the swing and looked around, and the bird did nothing. Finally, a day later or so, the bird died. The man was furious. He picked, picked up the bird, and he took it back to the store, the pet store, and said, your bird is dead. What's wrong with you? What have you done to me? And the store owner said, did the bird say anything to you at all? He said, yeah, just before he died, he said, do they have any food down there at that store? 
<laughs> I told you we'd get a little detour here. Okay, let's get serious here. Let's get to Mary. Mary, my soul glorifies the Lord, and my spirit rejoices in God my Savior. For he has been mindful of the humble estate of his servant. From now on, all generations will call me blessed. For the mighty one has done great things. Holy is his name. And that's as far as I go. Okay? How did Mary respond? Mary responded in awe. That because she literally, and we talk about when we give an invitation, we want Christ to be in us. She had, she had the physical manifestation of Christ in her. And all that that meant. Society and culture weren't too happy about it. And they even had plans to, for someone, if they so got caught, so to speak, in an immoral thing, they would die. So it wasn't a very popular position to have. And it wasn't a very popular thing to say that you were pregnant, and you were pregnant by God, which would, my, my goodness, would seem strange. But she took these things, she thought about them, she pondered them, she meditated on them. She thought, wow, could it be that I am giving birth to a savior and that he will be a suffering servant, a suffering Messiah, will suffer for me. So there's the desire for an intimate relationship with God when you're facing difficult times, when you're facing hard times, times when your friends they don't, they don't really know, understand what you're going through, and they don't understand to, have, to be praying for you. You feel alone, but you need to respond just like Mary responded. Lord, uh, just fill me up. Fill me up, Lord. Fill me up. Touch me. Have your way. The second one is Joseph, and this is in Luke chapter 2. Joseph also had a challenge. So Joseph went up from the town of Nazareth to Galilee to Judea to Bethlehem, the town of David, because he belonged to the house and line of David. He went there to register with Mary, who was pledged to be married to him and was expecting a child. While they were there, the time came for the baby to be born. She gave birth to her firstborn, a son. She wrapped him in clothes, placed him in a manger because there was no room for available for them. Okay. Joseph had as much opportunity to be harassed and humiliated and made fun of as Mary did because he decided that to take that wonderful lady, Mary, whom he loved, and take care of her, provide for her, and bring her to a place where she would bring birth to the Lord Jesus. And again, when we are Christians, sometimes it's not too popular to say that I'm a Christian. I'm a born-again Christian. I have Christ living in me. It's not too popular. But let it be a time when we think about Christmas time when we think about God coming to us, filling us with his spirit, touching us with his word, changing our lives, strengthening us, giving us the true spiritual heritage that we have in Jesus. The next group is the wise men, and this is in Matthew chapter 2. Okay. After Jesus was born in Bethlehem in Judea, during the time of King Herod, Magi from the east came to Jerusalem and asked, Where is the one who has been born King of the Jews? We saw his star when it rose and have come to worship him. When King Herod heard this, he was disturbed and all Jerusalem with him. When he had called together all the people's chief priests and teachers of the law, he asked them where the Messiah was to be born. 
In Bethlehem of Judea, they replied, for well, this is what the prophets have written. But you, Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, are by no means least among the rulers of Judah. For out of you will come a ruler who, is, who will shepherd my people Israel. Okay. Wise men. They were, they were probably the most educated people of the time. And they, were, they, they studied a lot in the stars and in the universe. And there's, they, they can come up with constellations and all kinds of signs and wonders in the sky. When they did that, they discovered that there was going to be a star of Bethlehem that would come, and that star would indicate that a king is born. A newborn king would be terrific. And the king came, and the, and the child was born. Now, there are going to be coming times when you confront God during this coming year. You could come desiring intimacy, just like Mary did. You could come desiring protection like Joseph looked for, and the wise men digging in the scriptures. How many of you, uh, when you realize that sometime, of course, this in this year, that you're going to have some scripture that you're going to have to really study? How many of you have picked out a verse or two for this year to memorize, to know the scripture, to work through it, to look at it, to study it, and to find the truth. So we can come as Mary, desiring intimacy, and God responds to us in that. And then there's Joseph, desiring the protection, and, and uh, the protection against ridicule and embarrassment. And now the wise men, the wise men who were scholars. We need to think, really get a hold of the scriptures Memorize them, meditate on them, study them. How many verses do you have memorized? How many verses do you have planned to memorize this coming year? You know what the scripture tells us that when, if we memorize scripture, meditate on scripture, and go to sleep with scripture in our mind, and wake up with scripture in our heart, if we do that, God will give us absolute success. We will succeed in what we do. You might say, oh, I'm too young to memorize scripture, or I'm too old. You never. When you memorize scripture, it just pours the word of God in you and, and brings healing. And finally, we have the shepherds in Luke chapter 2. How did they respond? And there were shepherds living out in the, field by, in the fields nearby, keeping watch over their flocks at night. The angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid. Bring your good news that will cause great joy for all the people. Today in the town of David, a Savior has been born to you. He is the Messiah, the Lord. Okay. How did the shepherds respond? The shepherds were, were met by God, and the shepherds got instructions from angels on how to worship. Glory to God in the highest. Praise God. Bless God. They were filled with praises and great joy. They would, they would love to have that wonderful time of praising God. And even though they were common shepherds, just like us, common people, he would come and he would meet with them and fill them with joy. Now, I wonder if we could get our students in to help us celebrate. And what I want to do is, they're, they're, you know, God has certain attitudes and so, I hate to say it, but mood that when you worship him, when you come to pray, do you pray for, 
protection, for blessing? Do you pray for uh, wisdom as from the scriptures? Do you worship and praise? Just all out worship and praise. Bless him. Bless him, bless him, bless him. Thank you, God. Thank you. Can you imagine if you were worshiping and praying and an angel appeared to you and said, sing glory to God. Sing praises to God. What is glory? Do you ever sing that, that term? When you look at the term glory in the Old Testament, there's a weight to it. Great, great, come on in. There's a weight to it. And that weight is the presence of God. A lot of times when we see what God has done, we weep, we break, we are broken before him. This hands him do it. What do you got, man? <laughs> you, you, were the, you were the angel, right? Yes. Okay. You're still that? Okay. You're still the angel. Okay. But what I want is, is to these children to help me celebrate joy. There's joy and there's quiet, awesome intimacy. And so I would like the group, if they would sing 10,000 Reasons and then Joy to the World. Okay? And you guys just stand here. I don't know what it is. Now, this is a special song that indicates and reflects the intimacy and joy of God that we can experience. And then we'll do the joy to the world. So, okay. My stroke. They don't join us.
Savior. Amen. And guess what? These bodies, we might shed these bodies, but we will never die. Your true spirit will live on for eternal life. Just think, now that you know Jesus and you're born again, you have eternal life. You're not going to die. Your body will wear out. You'll get a new body, but you'll never die. Isn't that a tremendous thought? Now, I'm going to ask the students to follow me. I want you to sing joy to the world, and we're going to do some joy, okay? Follow me. celebrate Christmas every day this year. Yes, Lord. Fill us with joy, Lord, Amen. in Jesus' name. Everybody said? Amen. Amen.